want to go over before I go into Q and A. I want to show you guys um, scripting, like adding a custom audience and um, starting to build a target audience, and then using Open Graph data and stuff like that. Have you guys seen that? Because I'm using it more and more and more, and I'm I'm loving it. Yeah. Okay. I'll just I'll just show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to log into this website. And I'll show you some tricks that I've learned as well about getting Facebook to uh, to display your when you're sharing a link to your blog or to your website on Facebook and it's not showing right. I'll show you guys uh, a really cool way to uh, to work with that. So let me just log in here and show you some of the things we've been doing. Okay, so for instance, even the uh, the webinar page. I think I had done one on here. So if you go to, into any page um, that has V3 installed on it, um, when you go down to the V3, um, the project supremacy on page SEO part, and you click over to social, okay, what this social box is for is for open graph settings. This isn't the one that I did it on, so let me go to a different one. Let's go to, uh, where is it? Okay, this one. Uh, so yeah, we're doing a webinar tomorrow with the guys from the lab, for instance. So I, I wanted to promote that. You guys probably got emails about it and everything like that. But the way I set this whole thing up, okay, was obviously created the page first, um, the landing page for the lab. And then I went to social, okay, and I set up my social settings um, here. So what when I share this particular URL, on Facebook, I want to control the way that it looks, right? So that's what Open Graph basically is, and I did it for Twitter as well. We have Facebook and Twitter, um, but you can put in your title, your description, and then a link to an image, and it gives you a little preview of how it's going to look. Obviously, I create the image myself. Uh, I believe the dimensions, um, you can look them up on Google, but I believe it's 1,200 pixels wide by 630 pixels tall will display the best, okay? And the reason I do this, okay, is once again, so that let, let's just go to the Facebook page and we'll show it to you guys. You already seen it. So that when I share it on Facebook, all I have to do is put in the URL, right? And it, it loads the thing that I put into that page in open graph settings. Now you guys probably, a lot of you guys probably know this stuff. Um, but what you may not know, okay. Number one, you can erase this link and now type anything you want and it maintains it maintains the clickable entry, right? After you delete the link. The next thing you might um, not know is if you guys ever put these up and then something's not jiving, like the picture's wrong or the description's wrong, um, it's it's maybe it's got an old image or Facebook's just choosing the wrong shit. What you guys can actually do is if you go to the Facebook um, social share, Debugger. I don't know if you guys know about this tool. Give me a one if you know about this tool and a two if you don't. Let's just see. Okay, cool. Mostly twos. So here's what this this sharing debugger is, guys, and it's and it's great. Um, a lot of times when um, you're sharing um, stuff on. Facebook, okay, and it's getting these images wrong. It's because Facebook has actually already crawled that page and they cached whatever version of that page they saw. Now, if you didn't have open graph, open graph settings already there, okay, they'll just grab what they think is the right title, the right image and stuff like that. I'm sure you've seen which image do you wanna use and it grabs the actual post title and description and puts it on there. It looks like shit, to be honest. Um, or you have open graph settings on there but you put them on you know, weeks or months ago and it's already got a, a cache of that. Well, what this one does, so let me, let me erase this. What this debugger tool does is you can go in and update your, um, your page or your open graph settings to make it look however you want, okay? Then, so let's just do a quick change here. So the super stacked webby, um, let's just write um, PSV3. Okay, I'm gonna make one small change. Okay, I'm just gonna add the word PSV3 to the title. Now I'm gonna update that. Hey, David Schloss, what's up? Um, 
Now, if I were to share that same URL on Facebook, it wouldn't pick up the change that I just made, okay? Because the cache is already there. I could share this URL again and it will show the exact same thing. Let, let me give you an example. Okay, we'll just grab the URL. We'll go back to Facebook and we'll share it again. Okay, and nothing's changed. That's probably the old one, but it doesn't matter. So what the debugger does is you can put in a URL that you want to um, reset the cache for, okay? And then you debug it and you can see the, t the last time that it was scraped was 20 hours ago. So here's how it looks on Facebook and anyone that wants to share it, this is how it's gonna look. Notice the PSB3 isn't there, but if I wanna instantly update this to make sure that it's showing correctly, I just have to hit scrape again, okay? And there it is. Now it has the PSB3 title, okay? So that's just a way that you guys, using this um, sharing debugger, let me give you that link as well, cause it's a good one. Let me pop that in your box. Okay, this is a good way, guys, to refresh your open graph settings um, when you're using Project Supremacy um, not to create the open graph settings. That's a really, really good way to do things to make sure it shares right. So let me, let me close this. And now I'll show you that because it's got an updated version two seconds ago, last scrape, now I can take this URL, share it, and there's the PSV3, so it's completely updated. Um, the other thing you can do, by the way, guys, is um, anything you shared previously, you can actually refresh the, uh, the share attachment. So if, um, if I put something new up there, I go over here, I update anything, and I, I made a post where you know it was an old post, but I wanted to grab the new shit. All I have to do is press refresh share attachment, and it'll grab the new stuff. You can see there's the PSV3. I'll just cancel this because I don't actually want to do that. But that's all good information and stuff that um, I, I found out with playing with all the PSV3 open graph stuff and like advertising on Facebook that I think is really, really useful and that you guys will really, really like if you do any social, um, any social sharing type of stuff. Let me go take that out of there now because I actually don't want that PSV3 there. So we'll go back over to social and we'll take out PSV3. I'll update that page. Any questions on that guys? And I'll show you now what I do with that further as well. Okay, there, it's all back to normal. And just type in your questions guys, if you have them and I'll, and I'll answer them. So. Now, obviously, guys, we're promoting um, a webinar tomorrow. We're actually having this webinar. The lab, um, Matt Diggity, Dino Gomez, and Mark Luckenbach are coming on to talk about their, their, their program, the lab. And then I'm going to talk about how um, Project Supremacy works really, really well with strat. They teach strategies, and we have software that implements strategies. So it's actually a really good marriage. Um, so they're going to teach the strategies, and then I'm going to come on and show how PSV3 is able to have, actually implement a lot of those strategies and, and save a bunch of time. But... I want to promote this, right? So what I can do now, okay, once I set up the open graph stuff, okay, is I have a page for Project Supremacy, not even just, I have the group obviously, but I also have a page, okay? And you need a page to be able to do what I'm about to show you. Okay, so there's the page for Project Supremacy. What I'll do, once I have the open graph um, information and set up on that page and I have everything the way I want it, I'll share the URL to that page, or sorry, to that particular, okay, to this page. I know I'm gonna start using the word page a lot. So this URL, the lab, this is the landing page um, to sign up for the, to, for the webinar, right? Um, so I'm gonna share the link to this landing page on my Facebook page, <laughs> okay? So the Project Supremacy actual page. And the reason I want it on my page is because now as a page owner, I can actually boost the post. You can see 5,700 people reached. Um, I can boost this post now and it'll become one of those sponsored posts um, in Facebook. And then I can also start targeting. Um, and the way that I target guys, okay, is, um, is pretty awesome actually. It's really, really um, 
targeted and the way that I do it, I got to go back into my blog. I set up my targeting like this. I go to Facebook and I grab a pixel. So let's go into, uh, that's the developer tool. Okay, so if I go to my uh, ads manager in Facebook, okay, and then I'm going to go to pixels. Okay, I have a pixel that I have in here. I forget where I grab it from. Facebook's changing. I'm not very pro with pixel, but basically what I just do is I grab my, my pixel. Okay, but you, you guys are probably better at this than me, but um, I grab my Facebook pixel, my generalized Facebook pixel, and I go into Supremacy V3 SEO settings, and I do this when I set up a site right away, by the way. This is like one of the first steps that I take. And I go into scripts, and I paste my script, my Facebook pixel code script, there it is, into the global scripts of my Project Supremacy V3 page. Now, what this is doing is that every person who visits any page on this domain, v3.projectsupremacy.com, is being pixeled um, as a visitor in my, my custom audiences. So the, the next thing after I create my pixel, okay, and install my pixel is I go to um, an audience and I create a custom audience. And I'll show you guys a couple examples of the audiences I'm creating. So you can see, um, these are actually, Let's say, uh, where's my Project Supremacy one? So there's the Project Supremacy homepage. I have a custom audience of 4,100 people. Um, the Project Supremacy main domain, okay? Um, 70,000 people. So I know that I have a custom audience of 70,000 people who have visited at least one page on the domain of projectsupremacy.com, right? Now that makes them targeted because they already know what Project Supremacy is because they visited um, my website or this contest that we had back when we launched V2, 71,000 people visited the page for the contest. They, they probably have, they're not probably as good of an audience because they were just entering, <clears throat> excuse me, a contest, but these people know what project supremacy is. So now to kind of bring it all home, I take, because we're launching this webinar, I put open graph data on it. I share it to my page, my Facebook page. Sorry, I got so many tabs open. I think you guys get the point. So I share it to my Facebook page, right? And then when I boost the post, it says, who do you want to boost it to? I choose that custom audience. I say, well, I want that Facebook um, post to go to these 70,000 people who are all targeted in Project Supremacy. And that's how I'm able to get really good, um, high targeted conversion people like looking at posts that are all relevant, right? And I've been doing this with a lot of things now. Um, I've been doing it on my Bitcoin site. Now I'm starting to do a lot more on Project Supremacy and it's been working awesome and I'm absolutely loving it. Here's another one that I'm running just for um, getting people over to the sales page for Project Supremacy. I created this image of the happy sad guy and then, you know, I did all that and I'm running this post now and you can see there's a bunch of likes and shares and comments starting to come in. I only did this a few days ago, but these things guys are like, they're just really good ways to, uh, to control everything and do some really good Facebook advertising. So um, I definitely wanted to show you guys that. Is there any questions so far about all that stuff? I know I'm kind of being a little bit sloppy in the, in the way I'm showing it. Hopefully you guys understand what's going on though. Yeah, no problem, Rich. How quick does initial traffic come in? Um, when you do a Facebook, so if you're talking about like when I um, when I run one of these, okay, when I, so I create the open graph and then I share the link to my page and then I click boost post, right? And then I say, I want it to go to the audience of people who have visited my site or I can create a custom audience and do things like, I only want to target people who are interested in WordPress, okay, stuff like that. How fast does the initial traffic come in? Usually it takes about five minutes to 10 minutes to get um, the, um, the ad, sorry, approved. And after that, um, it can happen almost immediately. So it's, it's very, very fast to get uh, traffic from using this method. 
And then of course, guys, like the way you set up your ads, you can target for like, I want lots of comments and shares, or I want lots of links. Now I'm not a Facebook advertising pro at all, um, but I could definitely get some guys on here that are Facebook advertising pros and, and teach, show them what we got and then get them to teach you guys um, a lot more about how to set up ads better, target ads better with Facebook and shit like that. Uh, Waikiki, who you met after I built the site, how long does it take to get the initial traffic? Well, it depends on what, what kind of marketing methods you're doing, right? If you're waiting for search engine optimization, I mean, everything's as fast or as slow as, as you know, as, as good as you are. Meaning if you're a good SEO and you can get it ranking fast for high traffic keywords, you'll get traffic immediately. Or if you're one, you know, maybe you run a really big Instagram page or account and you're really big on social marketing. So you have Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat and all that stuff and you're driving traffic that way, um, it can be immediate, you know, um, completely. So it just depends how good of a marketer you are and, and the method that you're choosing to market. But if you, if the first step that you always take when you build a new website is you grab your pixel code and with V3, you put it in your script. That's, that's one of the first things you should do because from now on every visitor to your website can now be added to a custom audience that you can later on advertise to. And I think that's a really, really important thing to do um, with all sites. Um, Raf, you can't load the picture on your social using it with SERP tech. It just says idling grace. I'm not sure what you mean there, Raf. You'll have to retype that question. Um, Dottie, can you get a Facebook pixel code if you haven't advertised on Facebook before? I believe you can. I think the Facebook pixel code is like the first step in, in, in what you do with Facebook because they want you to advertise like Facebook makes money by you spending advertising dollars on their platform. So they'll give you that pixel code for free so that you can start building custom audiences and make your advertising experience on Facebook more enjoyable and efficient. So you'll definitely be able to get that pixel code for free. Let me just close some of these pages here, guys. Um, any more questions on the Facebook stuff, guys? Otherwise, we can go to a general Q&A about um, V3. Let me actually get on the web, um, just to ask a question. Um, I always like to, is there anybody that's on um, one of these webinars for the first time? Give me a one if this is your first time on any sort of supremacy webinar. See if there's any new people out here. Okay. And then give me a one if you do not own Project Supremacy V3 yet and you're still like checking it out. Give me a one if that's you. And then of course, give me a two if you already own it and you're just here for the training. Okay, lots of twos and a couple ones. Okay. What's a three, Dominic? <laughs> Okay, for, since there's so many people that are on that are here for the training, um, do you guys want to go in into a Q&A then? And you guys probably have some questions or things that you want to um, get answered. Or do you guys want me to choose another topic for you and just start showing you how it works? Okay, Rich says definitely go for another topic. Just teach. <laughs> you guys don't have any specific questions. The thing is, I really want to try and touch on the stuff that's that's you know confusing people the most. Um, so it's always nice to have that feedback from you guys. You know where I, I I get to hear from you guys. You know I don't get this part or I don't understand that part. Um, and that's what I like to kind of touch on the most. But. So far, nobody's really asking anything too specific, which means you guys are pros at this and you just like seeing how I approach things versus how you guys approach things. Um, 
Mike just asked if we can do a build out of a local site series um, of Webby's sometime. Um, you know, I'm actually planning on doing something like that, Mike, but I, I'm going to do it with an affiliate site instead of a local site. Just because local is a lot easier, right? Um, and we do have coaching.projectsupremacy.com, which was our coaching course um, for for building a local site that covered how we built spray foam insulation Edmonton, but that was with Project Supremacy V2. Um, V3's obviously got a lot more power. Um, backups, I got two questions here about backups. How do you set up backups and where do you insert your Google Drive data? Okay, backups guys are pretty simple. Um, you, In order to run your backups, you have to hook up the, let me just take this uh, screen over here for a sec because I want to see if I'm going to be sharing any sensitive info before I do. Um, backups, you have to set up the place that you want to back up first. Um, let me just check your backup settings. Yeah, I do have my API keys showing. Let me log out of this account. I'll log into a different account. And I can show you guys a little bit more. You won't see as many sites, but you'll definitely see uh, some more info. Okay, yeah, here we go. Here's a, here's just a, like a demo account. So. Um, uh, here's a demo account with a bunch of demo stuff on it. So if you want to do backups properly, guys, the first place you're going to go to is settings. Okay. And then you're going to go to backup settings. Okay. And then these are the air. These are the places where you will have the ability to do backups, Dropbox, Amazon S3, um, your own FTP server, um, Microsoft OneDrive and Google cloud. So in order to um, hook up your backup, you have to choose which one of these you want uh, and then either authorize it like these three are authorizable um, or fill in the information, okay, to do the backup. Once you have your chosen place that you wanna store your backups set up in the backup settings, then you would go to backups, okay, and you'd pick the site that you wanna backup, okay, so, and then you choose the place that you set up. So for instance, I use Dropbox, okay, I would go hook up my Dropbox, approve it, and then I would choose Dropbox as my storage method Right. And then I would have a backup schedule. How often do I want to back it up? And I saw this question actually come up in a group. Uh, people are asking, how much should I back up a site? And a really great answer that I read was, well, how much content updates do you do? You know, like if you're updating your content daily, then maybe you should think about doing a daily backup. OK, but if you're only updating your content once a month, then maybe a weekly backup is fine for you. OK, so it should be dependent on how much you're updating your site. And, and that's a good answer. Um, what your limit is going to be is how many um, backups it actually saves. So like it'll like let's say you're on a weekly limit. OK, and you put in five, that'll save five weeks worth of backups. And then when it goes to the sixth week, the oldest one will automatically get deleted. And that's just a space saving um, feature so that you don't overload your Dropbox with like a bunch of backup files every week or every day. So those are really the only setups, guys. You just choose your method, you set up your uh, your storage method and settings. You come over here, you choose the storage method you wanna use, your schedule and the amount of backups you wanna save, and then you just click create backup and it will start doing it automatically for you. Um, let me log back out of this account. I might actually open two windows here just so I can run a couple different things. Let me go to a private window here. I'll log into my account. Hello. Where's my... Sorry, I just got to log in over here. Is that so Kevin and uh, Kevin Butler and who is the other one that asked about backups? Klaus. Does that answer you guys' questions about backups? Pretty good.
Okay, cool. I'm just trying to find my dang login here. Okay, screw it. I'm just gonna just take too much time. Um, cloning a template site. Um, we don't have any clone features yet, Dominic. Uh, why, what do I think of Igniter for local site building? I don't really know what Igniter is, so I can't really comment on that. Do you recommend backing up surf tech sites on a Google Cloud? Um, I know, I think your line of thinking there, Raphael, is that um, surf tech is kind of, you know, that's kind of pushing the limits of what Google likes. Um, so backing it up on a Google service <laughs> might key them off. Um, I wouldn't worry about that. It's, it's really a zip file, what you're backing up. And I don't think Google's going to go in as far as like log into your sites and read through your zip files. If you're really paranoid, just don't use it. Use like Dropbox or something else. <coughs> David, does the backup make a clone or does it exclude any files or folders? No, it doesn't. Ex it doesn't ex exclude. It does not exclude anything. Um, it backs up your home directory. It'll back up all the files and folders of your home directory. It also will back up the databases um, that are on that particular site so that if anything bad were to happen and you had file loss, you could simply execute a backup and it'll just overwrite everything that's there with the older backup and you'd be fully functioning and up and running again. Uh, how is the restore done from backup? Let me. That's what I was going to actually show you. So I have to log back in to my site. So backup restorations are pretty easy, okay? So if I go to um, to this site, how to make money, you can see how to have it backing up to Dropbox weekly on a five limit schedule. So to if, if I needed to restore a backup, I could just click on view backups and it'll load the backups right here. There they are. Okay. And there's my five. Um, then I have the option to download the backup to my local drive, delete it or restore it. Now, um, if you, re if I click restore, are you sure? Okay. It's going to overwrite everything. It's going to give you, um, an, um, some information that you need to understand before the backup actually executes. So make sure you read that. But if you're happy with what's going on, um, just click restore and it'll actually restore um, automatically for you. So it won't be, um, it's not hard at all. You just click restore and then restore and it's done. It'll overwrite your old crappy files. Can you restore it to another domain or directory? Um, Kevin, so you can download the backup. Okay, um, and then you could re-upload like the database and the WordPress core files on a different domain. Um, but you're going to have to go in um, to your PHP admin and let it know this is more advanced for more advanced users that know how to affect PHP tables and let it know that you're on a new domain now. Right. So it's, it's not as easy as just saying, OK, I want to take all the files from how to make money with Bitcoin and put it on BitcoinGrabber.com. And I just restore all the files. Like it's it's almost that easy, but um, you do have to realize, remember that you've gone from one domain to another domain, and there is stuff inside of the databases that um, are dependent on the domain name that you're on. So unless you know what those are, um, you you can't successfully execute a backup to a new domain name without changing things in the PHP admin. How will blockchain affect WordPress? I. <laughs> I don't really know. I have no idea. Yeah, plus WP config changes. Yeah, there's all kinds of little changes that need to be made if you're going to restore to a new domain. Like really what, what that would be, if, if I was trying to take this how to make money with Bitcoin.net and I wanted to take that content and move it to a new site, really what I'm trying to do is clone, <coughs> right, to a new domain. And we don't really have that feature yet, but um, that is definitely something on the to-do to list. Um, here's, I'll, here's one of the new features that I'll show you guys kind of to switch topics. Um, cause I just think this one's so important that I, I, I covered a lot, but 
want to cover it again. Um, or maybe I'll do custom stuff. Some of the new features that have that have been built into uh, link tracking and um, project management. Where should I start? I'll start with affiliate links. Okay. Um, this affiliate products is actually kind of poorly named. This is getting renamed to link management right away because what this is is a link manager. Okay, it's not an affiliate product. It has really not much to do with affiliate products at all, other than most people that are tracking links on their site are actually tracking affiliate links. Um, and we did, uh, like initially when we built this, you were able to search through the Amazon Marketplace, Market Health, and ClickBank for affiliate products that you wanted to promote on your sites. Um, but really, this is a link manage a link manager now. When you guys create a link, okay, so let's let's actually do this. I want to show you a couple amazing things um, with, with this link manager. Okay, I'm gonna have to use Facebook. I'll go into the group to show this stuff. Okay, here's our group. Is everybody in the Project Supremacy group? Hopefully, so we can all see these uh, these posts. Okay, so let's let's create a link. Okay, let's 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 actually go and create an affiliate link. So let's say, um, I don't know, I was part of an affiliate program for um, Travelocity, okay? Now, they're part of the Commission Junction Network, okay? But we're gonna just work a lot. Let's say that this was my affiliate link right here. Okay, this Lang ID, even though it's a language ID thing. So let's, let's take this. And let's assume, okay, for a second, that this was actually our affiliate link. Affiliate links typically look at something like typically look something like this. Okay. It might say AF ID or something, right? Okay. Now let's take this link. Okay. And we're going to create a new link in our link builder. Okay. So what we're going to do is create a short code. Okay. And we have a couple options. So let's say the short code, this is our travelocity. So I'll just name the short code travelocity. Okay. And then the title the title kind of serves two functions. Um, it's the, the, it'll become the title of your link, but it'll also become the clickable text. So like, for instance, if I said the title was now click here for Travelocity, that would become the clickable text eventually. So we're just going to stick with Travelocity. I'll show you how to change that for now. Okay. And then obviously the URL. So there's, there it is, the trip clickable link. Okay. Or I could change it to click here and it becomes a clickable link. So that becomes your anchor text, um, basically. Now, you can also make these image based. Okay. If you want to upload an image, um, you can make the link become an image. And I'll show you kind of how that works. I'll do two of them. I'll do one as a text and I'll do one as an image. And then you have three options um, for your affiliate links. I always have these on, all three of them. Okay. Number one, your affiliate link will open in a new one. When someone clicks, clicks on any link on your blog that's set up through the Project Supremacy, and typically it'll be a, an affiliate link, um, it'll always open in a new window. That's a good practice just because it keeps your other window open, which increases um, dwell time and stuff like that on your blog. It becomes a nofollow link, which is good because if you're building links and trying to build juice to your blogs, you don't want to have a bunch of do follow links that are affiliate links. It just is a better practice to make them a nofollow. And then you want to mask the URL so that when people um, hover over the link in the bottom left, you can typically in most browsers, you can see what the actual link is. And here you can see it's travelocity.ca question mark app ID 4100. It's the actual link. But when you mask it, OK, it'll change to whatever site it's on. So, for instance, we're on how to make money with Bitcoin.net. That link will become um, become a how to make money with Bitcoin link. Right, so it, it masks it. So let's actually now take that link. Okay, we're gonna go to filters and I'm gonna look for my link. Okay, there it is, Travelocity. Now I'm gonna create another link as an image link just so I can show you both. So I'm gonna create a short code. Okay, we're gonna call it Travelocity. Okay, and I'll have to name it something different now. So I'll just say two. Okay, the title, I'm going to leave that blank because we're going to use an image. So let's go get a little image of Travelocity. So I'll just do images. 
I'm a terrible speller. Okay, so let's grab a really small one. Let's just grab this guy. I'm gonna save this image on my desktop for now. Okay, try velocity1.jpg. So, um, title will leave blank because we're gonna make this an image. There's my, my affiliate URL is the same. And then I have to browse for this image, so we need to upload it. So there it is, Travelocity 1. Okay, and then I'm going to grab the file URL and just press Control C. Okay, I'll paste it in there. And then have all three turned on once again. Open new window, no follow. Now, there's there and now the, there's the clickable image now. Oh, I guess I got to give it a title. Travel. So I'll just call it Travelocity. Click here. Whatever. It doesn't matter because it's an image-based link. Now I'm going to show you. I'm going to put both of these on a page now. Okay, and then I'll come back and show you something about these short codes, which is pretty awesome. So what I'll do is I'll go to a post. I'm going to just create a, a new post for this example. Okay. And don't get confused with the fact that I'm on a Bitcoin site making a Travelocity link. If, if I was actually an affiliate of Travelocity, I might have like a traveler, um, traveler's blog or something. Okay, I just want to show you what these links can do in, in total. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's use, let's just use the default editor, not the Divi Builder. Okay, and I'm going to go to my visual default editor. Now, from here, okay, we have these four short codes with the project supremacy links, and this one is your affiliate short codes. Okay, so I'm going to take the Travelocity link, you know, pop it in, okay, and it's asking me, do you want a new anchor text or title? Um, I'll just add click here, okay. We'll add that short code, and then I'm going to add one more short, co short code. Okay, Travelocity 2, which was our image link, and then the anchor text doesn't matter because um, it's an image one. So I'm going to preview this now, or I'll actually, no, we can preview, I'll publish it. And let me show you those links, how they look, how they end up looking on a page, and what happens with them as people start viewing your pages. Yeah, we'll go over that later. Okay, so there is our clickable image link. Now, if you look um, on the bottom left as I hover over the link, okay, you can see it's now how to make money with Bitcoin, question mark, PS redirect equals 21. Same for this one. This is PS redirect equals 20. There's my text link right here. Oh, it's hard to get it. Just that. Okay, there's the text link. I put them beside each other. There's the image link. Okay, so let's just click on one. You can see it opens in a new window, blah, blah, blah. Okay, all the things I told it to do, it's a no-follow link. It takes me over to Travelocity, blah, blah, blah. Perfect, right? But now, if we go back into our affiliate products, okay, and I refresh the screen, you're going to see these little numbers change because we are tracking metrics on each of the links, which is nice. We're getting reporting for affiliate links and literally any type of link you want. Sometimes I track internal links like from one page to another. Okay, so I'm going to load those. We're going to go back and look at our Travelocity links. Okay, what you'll see now is um, one of them has a click. Well, I guess a bunch of you are on that page, but we have six impressions, five impressions, one click, and then our CTR. Okay, so it does track that for you. You can also view um, the tracking, which is over time, it'll show you a traffic graph of how many impressions and unique clicks that you're getting. And if you want to reset your statistics, you can always do that here. So it does track all that stuff for you. Now, further to this, now this is the really important part. Because we've masked our links, okay? Because we've masked our links, what we have in here is we have copying the short code, okay? And what copying the short code will do, will just make it easy for you to paste a short code like that. But we also have um, the ability to do that right here in affiliate short codes, right? These are all the affiliate short codes we can have. But the more important one, and the one that I find really interesting, is this, this little secret um, spy looking guy. Okay. If I, and it says copy the short codes masked URL. Okay. So I'll click that. 
okay? And let me show you what the mask URL looks like. See how it's how to make money with Bitcoin? Now, if I go to social media, okay, and I wanna share an affiliate link on social media, I'll use my mask link and watch what the preview that it fetches is. Instead of anything about how to make money with Bitcoin, it's actually travelocity.ca. It goes right to the page of Travelocity, fetches that information, Okay, so when I post that, remember, once you share a link, you can delete the link and it keeps the thing. But look at that. Look how sneaky that is, guys. I just shared an affiliate link, right, on social media to through an affiliate link, but it, it actually looks like I'm just sharing a Travelocity link. Yeah, exactly. Now the comments are starting to come in. Everyone's just realizing what just happened here, and David nailed it. It's very cool since Facebook does not like the affiliate links um, on Facebook, but we're not actually see the funny thing with Facebook is um, They don't realize we're sharing an affiliate link. We're sharing a project supremacy link, right? So but for some reason I and to be honest, this is something that we didn't intend it was just like a, a pleasant surprise when we started doing this um, Facebook grabs they still go and grab the data from the end result like after the affiliate link they grab the data pull that in and allow the affiliate link through. So Sylvie says, so I don't need a page on a WordPress website to create a link in a short code. No, you don't even, like if all you wanna do is create affiliate links um, to share on social media or wherever, yeah, you just come to projectsupremacy.com, um, affiliate products, and this is gonna be changed to link management, by the way, guys, It'll, it's more amply named or properly named by being link management than affiliate products. But yes, the answer to your question is yes. Any affiliate link that you want to build can be built in here. And then you use this little guy, copy the, the make sure once again that when you're building the link, okay, the feature that's going to hide it from Facebook is, is typically the mask URL. But always turn all three on. I think it's the best bang for your buck. Um, turn all three on. And then when you go to share the link, it's this, the mask URL is what you want to share. Yeah, David, these are click tracking numbers. So it, it um, as you're share, so as you're sharing the link on social media, um, it'll track one impression and it'll track the click. But it, as you're sharing it on your website, every time it loads to a new IP on your actual website, it counts as an impression. So you can see, like, obviously, my how to make money with Bitcoin site like gets a lot of traffic. You can see, for instance, this Evergreen uh, impressions is at sixty five thousand, which is crazy and then this one's at 115,000 um, but if it's more realistic numbers like Quadriga or something I uh, have 1800 impressions um, 575 clicks and uh, a CTR of 31% so it is tracking numbers um, and then to show you the graphical representation as well there's our unique clicks and impressions um, for that link so something that you guys might want to do, like if you have a link that you want to share on your blog and you also want to share it on social media, you might want to create two different short codes. Like for instance, Coin Mama. I could have a Coin Mama for my blog and then have another one for social media so that I'm separating the stats out, right? There's no reason you can't do that. Um, where an easy way to do that would just be, so say Coin Mama, what I'll do is I'll duplicate this short code, okay? And it'll load up all the same parameters, but then I'll just give it a different uh, title and URL name, and I'll I'll do that. Um, so let's get the Coin Mama. I just duplicated it, so now I'll search for Coin Mama stuff. Coin Mama. Okay, there's Coin Mama. There's the duplicate that it created. So now I'll go into it, and I'll edit this short code. Okay, Coin Mama for social or something like that for social sharing or, or, or I could name it however I want SS for social sharing. Okay. And it's basically the same link, but I just have to keep it in mind that um, I want to separate my links that I'm using on my site stats from links that I'm only sharing through social media stats. So now if I'm going to share something on social media, this is the one I grab. Okay. Coin mama. So I'll grab it, copy it, Go to social media, paste it, and there it goes. 
Um, David, so can we create, so there's the coin mama just came up. Uh, so can we create multiple for split testing for the same affiliate? Yeah, that's pretty much what I just did. Actually. I didn't read your question before I did that. Uh, Sylvie, so could you track visits to a landing page that is an overlay to a SERP text site? Could you track visits to a landing page? Well, okay. Remember that what we're tracking here is clicks on a link, right? So you're asking to track visits, whereas this is actually tracking clicks on a link and impressions of that link. So it's a little bit different than what you're asking. You would, for what you want, um, Sylvia, I would just install something like statcounter.com. It's a free stats plugin and it'll show you how many hits your um, how many hits your pages are getting. All right, so that's um, it for the short codes, guys. The link management, that's gonna be updated on the next plugin update um, called link management. Any more questions on that one? I wanted to show you guys that because that one's super cool, especially the ability to share affiliate links on Facebook. <laughs> it's so sneaky. And it looks like you're actually just making a Travelocity link. If the guy's really smart, um, you know, once again, when you hover over this, it's still how to make money on, on the bottom left. It's still how to make money with Bitcoin. But most people don't look at that shit. They're just going to be like, oh, Travelocity.ca, boom, click on it, you know, and then it goes how to make money with Bitcoin, redirect. But redirects are just part of the industry. People know about it. Oh, yeah, direct dial phone numbers. Um, yeah, I can show that one, Sylvie, but it's kind of hard. I'll explain it. I won't show it. Um, so another thing you can do, guys, and we found this out on a webinar, um, is you can actually – oh, what site did I do this for? With these short codes, okay, if you create a short code – and the link that you use is um, the direct call number. Oh, I'd have to go look this up on another webinar. We did this. So I think it's what's the and if anybody knows it, just type it in um, the URL structure to use for a direct call. Um, anchor text. OK, somebody just saying it's tell. So let's try this. You have to be specific on this one. I guess it would be call us now. Or you could use an image or something instead, right? Remember, you can always use an image or you can use text. Um, hopefully this is the right format. Um, what we found Okay, with this doing this is that you can actually, um, if you have like a um, a, a, sh a link on your um, oh god, this is for SERP tech stuff. I'm like trying to explain this. People can you can put an image on a SERP tech site or a landing page that is a a short code using one of these short codes, and it'll actually create the big green button on the bottom of your phone. If, if people visit your site through a mobile device, okay? So with the, the format that I just did, let's go back to my short codes here, uh, telephone. So if I had a landing page um, for any type of site where this was the short code, let's actually do it. Let's add this short code. So I'm gonna copy the short code. We'll go back to that page. Okay, there, we'll just add it there. Now, if anybody goes to this URL on their cell phone, Okay, I'll put the, yeah, it gives the, the click to call button, but it's real big on a cell phone. It'll create it on the very bottom of the cell phone and it spans the whole screen. Um, there it is, call us now, okay. I hope, I hope that's the right format, but yeah, if this page was loaded on a cell phone, this would become a big green call button, which is awesome. So yeah, good point, Sylvie. Um, this, these short codes do support the uh, the telephone number URL standard. 
and it's it's awesome like especially when people are visiting your site through a mobile device to have this on there because it just creates the uh the call button so yeah thanks for reminding me of that super amazing feature actually actually yeah you're working on something awesome awesome um how much time we got left we got like an hour do you guys want to cover local stuff or affiliate stuff for the next hour let's do some keyword research so yeah lots of affiliate a couple locals let's do some keyword research guys site planning and get rid of those pages and links later on okay so now let's let's say you're starting a new site okay you're starting a an affiliate site and you're gonna go after some affiliate terms or whatever but you need to be thorough with your keyword research and you need to have a good plan you need to have a good site structure in mind like you have to keep all these things in mind um, the project planner um, is an amazing, amazing tool to be able to do this, okay? Uh, an amazing tool, I can't even tell you how amazing this thing is. So let's do, um, this one already has some in here, okay? So let's let's set up a new one as if this there were nothing there. So let's create a new project and we're gonna call this Webby Demo, okay? Typically I would call the project, um, the URL of the site, you can see custom stuff pets. Um, that's the actual project for this site. Okay, so Webby Demo. So let's say that's our first project and we're going to load it. Okay, and there's nothing here yet. So it says, to get started, please create a group. Okay, so what we'll do is instead of adding a group, what we're going to do is we're going to import groups um, automatically. Okay, so let's say, let's, let's stay with the theme of the site here. We're going after custom stuff pets. So that's going to be stuff like uh, we have an affiliate program through a company called Cuddle Clones. Okay, I'll show this all to you so you kind of get a good understanding of what we're doing. I'm sure you guys have seen this one before, most of you. Okay, so these guys pay us 10% on every Cuddle Clone, but the reason we joined up with them is because these Cuddle Clones are freaking expensive because they're custom, right? And I love the I love the keyword custom. I love the emotional attachment that people have to this product because it's actually of their pet. Um, I knew there was going to be low refunds. Um, people were going to love it. It's unique, okay? And then the keyword base for this affiliate program um, was was absolutely massive. Custom stuffed dog, custom clone dog, cat, horse, cow, blah, 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 ears, tail, blah. doesn't matter, right? There was just, to me, I saw this as like, okay, I'm going to get paid 10% of a $200 product. It's about $20 a sale. Um, it's very unique, and I think I can make a lot of sales for a lot of easy keywords, right? And especially that it's custom. Um, I love the word custom, by the way, for any affiliate product, because that's when people type in custom, like if I want a custom bike or a custom car, that's usually going to be expensive. And I usually am a buyer because I'm looking for something that's customized to me. So anyhow, so that was the program. So what I would do if I was just starting my keyword research, I already understand what my affiliate product is. Um, I already have the domain custom stuff pets. OK, now I'm going to start some keywords. So I'm going to automatically generate groups, okay? And I have to enter a seed keyword. So let's go with custom stuff. We'll just go with the main one, custom stuff pets, okay? And minimum search volume, let's make it 500 minimum cost per click. We're not going to worry too much about that yet, okay? I just want to make sure I'm getting some good search volumes, okay? Languages and countries. I guys, I know a lot of people have an argument of like, um, I only want to see traffic in my area or this or that, but this is the internet. People from all over the world, and especially in affiliate marketing, search for things. So I have these turned off on literally everything. Even if I'm in a local marketer targeting keywords um, in Edmonton alone, I still think there's people in Phoenix who actually live in Edmonton who are living in Phoenix for now, because I've done it, searching for services back up in Edmonton. But why would you disqualify that search just because it's not from the area that your website is geographically targeting, right? That's my line of thought um, when it comes to keyword research, always have everything on, okay? So anyways, back to this, um, minimum 500 search volume and cost per click we won't worry about yet. So I'm gonna click okay. 
what this will do now, what it's doing is it's going out to Google and it's scraping the AdWords tool for those keywords for us. Now it's not loading anything right now, so I'm gonna just refresh the page because it should have pulled a bunch of stuff in. Okay, Webby demo. Ah, oh, man, did it not work? Let's try that again. Okay, let's keep the search volume down this time. Let's just pull in everything. Okay, so there we go. Personally, um, I like to have a minimum keyword search volume because you can see, okay, so what, okay, let's start here. What did it do? Okay, first of all, what did it do? It went out and took my seed keyword and it pulled in AdWords groups. So one of the AdWords groups was family and community. One of them was dogs. Um, one of them was stuffed toys. One of them was fibercraft. So it, it tried to group my keywords for me already, right? But you can see like this list of family and community was huge, right? And it pulled in a lot of stuff like, and to be honest, I don't like cleaning up a big mess, right? It's, it's just too many things for me. So let's, that's why I like to have those, um, those filters on. So let's go back to projects. Let's delete Webby demo and start over again. Okay. Let's remove that and let's get the filter back on and working. Maybe the filter was kind of bugged, but hopefully not. So let's do this again. Okay, so starting over, manage, create a new project. Ready demo. And if you guys are not playing with this tool yet, you need to start getting used to this. This is the most efficient, effective thing I've ever done for building um, new content on my sites and like targeting keywords and shit like that. I like absolutely love this thing. I'm in love with it now. Okay, so actions automatically generate groups. Let's go with a higher search volume. I saw some big keywords in there, minimum a thousand. Okay, custom stuff, pets. Um, please note that the current groups and keywords, yeah, that's fine. Minimum cost, let's go, okay. Now this should work. Sorry, I'm vaping in the background here. <laughs> All right, much better, okay. Now we're only dealing with keywords that have a minimum of a thousand searches per month. Now, these are AdWords groups, okay? What we're gonna turn AdWords groups into is groups of keywords that we're gonna actually target on a page or a post. Okay, so um, let's just start looking. So here I see one custom teddy bear, okay? I love it. It's got 2,900 searches a month. It's got a $2.11 CPC. I definitely wanna target a group for teddy bears. So I'm gonna make this or even bears, okay? So I'm gonna make this a bears group or a bears page. I'll just put in bears and I'll put it in caps, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press Control F on my browser. I'm gonna look for the word bear in all keyword groups and it's saying there's nine. Okay, there's one, there's two is the other one. Stuffed teddy bears, stuffed bear, love it. I'm gonna highlight these two keywords with my checkbox, okay? Actually, sorry, that's the wrong way to do it, okay? I'm gonna hold down my control key and I'm gonna make them both turn blue. I don't know if you guys, let me make it bigger. Okay, oh, that's way too big. Okay, so when you click on a keyword, it, you can see the, the blue changing, but I wanna highlight both keywords. So I press down control and I make them both blue. Then on these six little dot things, excuse me, I'm starting to get excited because when I do this, I get excited. Um, I can click on those and just drag those keywords up into my group, right? So there we go. Now I have three keywords in this group, stuffed teddy bears, stuffed bear, custom teddy bear. Awesome. Okay. But there's still more on the page. I know what it, there is. Here we go. Bear stuffed animal, plush teddy bears, plush bear, and polar bear stuffed animal. Let's grab them. So remember, I'm going to hold down control, take the highlighted keywords. Okay, there they are. And now I'm going to drag them up into my bear group. Okay, so there we go. Now we have a group of keywords, okay, that is ready to be targeted. 
and create a, a, a post or a page for it, okay? But now we gotta do, we're, we'll do a little bit more work. I already love this group. It's just keywords at this point. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'm gonna select all the keywords and then I'm gonna go to my actions tab and I'm gonna say retrieve the keyword data. Okay, and that's gonna give me the competition metrics, the broad, the phrase, the um, in title and in URL. That'll tell me how easy or hard, in a general sense, okay, not a, an exact science, it'll tell me how easy or hard it is to rank for each one of those keywords, right? <coughs> Excuse me, guys, let me just grab a quick drink of water. Yeah, great question, Sylvie. Um, do you do any sort of keyword research outside of the project manager? Yes, you can. Um, I've been finding that I don't need to lately, but you can. And if you, you do go use another tool, whatever that tool may be, and you like certain keywords that are there, you can always use this actions tab and click add new keywords, right? And then you could just insert a list of keywords and it will automatically add them to that group. And then take the ones that don't have the volume in the CPC, click your actions tab and say, retrieve the volume in the CPC. And then the next step would be to retrieve the keyword data. Okay, but there's a group already, guys. Okay, let's let's do this. I'm gonna just, um, as it's grabbing stuff, let's look for a new group. Let's create another group here. Let's look for keywords. So Christmas stuffed animals. Uh, yeah, Christmas is kind of only pigs. Okay, a pig stuffed animal. Let's do pigs now. We got bears. So I'm gonna look for the word pig. Okay, so I already got two in here. Let's rename this to capitalize pig because that's our now our pigs group, okay? And there should be three keywords. Well, that's all we got for pig. Where's the third one? Bing, bing. Oh, it's all in the same group. Okay, we got our pigs group, done. So I'll press, press the green save button, press the green save button. Okay, there's already two. This is gonna become a page or a post. This is gonna become a page or a post. So now that I'm in the keyword research phase and, and I've already got a group going that I like, what I wanna do is I wanna get these out of this research phase, right? I wanna move this group because it's done, it's ready to be worked on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that group and this group, okay, actions, and I'm going to, um, where is it? Oh. Sorry, let me just check this out. Oh, where's the move to the new group? Oh yeah, move to a different project, there we go. So check the bears box, uh, check the pigs box. I think you actually can only do this one at a time for now, but I'm gonna take the bears group and I'm gonna move it to a different project, okay? And then it's gonna ask me, what project do you wanna move it to? And I'm gonna move it to my custom customstuffpets.com main project. This is the one that actually has groups that are going to create content for it, okay? So I'll move it. Right, so there, the bears is gonna disappear, off it goes, out of the research phase, into the working on phase, and then our pigs group, we're gonna do the same thing, actions, move to a different project, okay? And we'll move it over to our custom stuff pets move. Now, do you guys kind of get how I'm doing keyword research? Are you already kind of, you're already, kind of your lights are turning on or whatever, or your clocks are ticking or whatever the saying is? Just give me a one if you're with me so far. I'll show you what I do next now. Okay. So I could do this process all day, guys. Okay. I could do, um, you can see I have dogs. I have, you know, I see monkeys in there. I see all these great groups. It's just so many ideas, right? So now I take my groups, I organize them into the keywords that I want to target for that page, and then I take the research group and I move it into the actual project of where I'm actually doing actual work. Okay, so let's load this back up. So we're going into the custom stuff animals, okay? And we're looking for pigs, all right, or bears. And there's our competition. You can see it's a lot of red. Um, so I want to make sure that I'm on the right, um, so these colors, guys, green, yellow, red, these are called conditional formatting. What it's doing is saying, 
you know, if your volume's a certain number, you know, like for instance, if it's below 500, show up as red, meaning that's not a lot of traffic, but if it's above 1,000, show up as green, because that's a lot of traffic, or show up as yellow if it's in between those phases. Okay, that's called conditional formatting, and you can control this if you like. Um, we have three defaults right now, okay? Um, right here, you go up to manage and conditional formatting. Our two, sorry, our two defaults are affiliate and local. Local keywords are easier, so we adjust the numbers for those. So I'm gonna switch this to affiliate, and I'm gonna apply the template. Of a, you can also create your own template if you know what you're doing. Okay, so there we go. It didn't get that much easier, but I don't care because I know I can rank for a lot of this shit. So now, guys, what I want to do is I want to optimize. Let's let's make things easier. Let's do this. Actions collapse everything. Okay, I want to I want to focus on one thing. So there's my bears group. I'm going to open up my keywords and I'm going to open up my optimization box. Okay, so now what do I have? I have a group of highly targeted keywords. Okay, with all the volume metrics, the CPC and all the competition metrics I, I, I want. Everything's showing is hard, so whatever. I'm gonna go after the most high traffic stuff. But now I have to create a title, a description, an H1, and a URL for this group of keywords that tries to, you know, have all the keywords included amongst those descriptions. Now, I'm gonna get a notepad open because this is important. Okay, when you're optimizing. There's a couple things to keep in mind. Um, okay, so keep these things in mind when doing page or post SEO optimization, okay? Number one, never repeat a keyword that's in your domain that's in your domain in the URL or title. Okay, so an example of a bad would be if my URL is um, www.customstuffedpets.com. Okay, so here's a bad URL example. So let's go back to our group. And we're doing bears. Um, here's custom teddy bear keyword. Okay, so an example of a bad URL would be custom teddy bear. Okay, let's go back and just here, let me close this. So there's the keyword custom teddy bear. So custom teddy bear. Okay, this is a bad URL example. Okay, why? Never repeat a keyword that's in your domain in the title or in the URL. So I already have the word custom in the domain, so I don't need to repeat it in the URL, okay? So good URL would be more along these lines. Teddy bear, okay? I shouldn't say title actually. Title, that's wrong, it's URL only. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay, so now keep that in mind. Number two. Okay. Um, how would I put this? The most aggressive that you can be Let's do an aggressive example. Okay, so aggressive, let's say our keyword, the most important keyword to us in here, let's say for instance, we're gonna blend for all these keywords, by the way, we're gonna try and rank for every one of these keywords, but let's say the most important keyword that I really wanted to make sure I got was stuffed bear. Okay, it's got the most traffic, okay? Um, so let's say that's really what I wanna rank for. Aggressive example for Stuff bear. Okay, so we have four elements of optimization. We and in order from importance to least importance, um,
Okay. So we have a title, a URL, a description, and an H1. Those are the four main elements of your um, on-page optimization. The fifth being your content, okay? The, the actual content of the post. So let's do very, very aggressive optimization for stuff bear. Okay, so let's say our title was Stuff Bear Cuddle Clones, and then let's get our URL, okay? This would be a very, okay, that would be a very aggressive URL. Description could be something like, let's, let's go with the most aggressive. Let's, let's change this to most aggressive, okay? Um, stuff Bear Replica Toys. You know, buy one now, or something like that. That that would be your description in the in the thing, and then your H one stuff bears, okay, or stuff bear. Let's just call it stuff bear, and then your contents, whatever it's content. Do you guys see how this is super aggressive? Okay, what makes it aggressive is you're taking the exact keyword that you're trying to rank for, and you're putting it in order and first everywhere okay now can you get away with being super aggressive yeah actually you can okay um especially in local markets um and i think i've shown this example um quite a few times printer repair edmonton and let me say this the only other thing that you could do to make this even more aggressive is that if this was an, an emd okay if the if the domain name was actually stuffbear.com or dot pro or dot io Okay, that would be the most aggressive you could have in a URL sense. The next most aggressive is making the keyword the actual URL of the page. Now, um, the example of being aggressive and getting away with it, well, I guess this one finally fell, but for years, guys, I held the number one position. Actually, it looks in, in Google.ca, I think I still have it. I don't. Okay, for years I had this um, number one. Okay, printer repair Edmonton first in the title. The URL was printer repair Edmonton, and then first in the description was printer repair Edmonton. And then if you visit the site, the H1 was actually printer repair Edmonton, right? Which is ridiculously aggressive. Okay, now the thing to keep in mind. Okay, back to this. Um. Let's call this watch your aggressiveness. Okay. And blend it. Watch it and blend it. And I'm going to show you how to blend it. Okay. Aggressiveness. Okay. So let's do a less aggressive. Um, we'll take this whole thing. Okay. And let's do a less aggressive example. Uh, still for stuff bear. Okay. Okay. Our title are actually, you know what guys, I always think of it like this. Okay. The title and the URL are the two things that show up in Google. The description shows up as well, but the title and the URL are two of the strongest ranking factors. Okay. So if you're going to be, you want to be a bit aggressive, but not like overly aggressive, you want to put your keyword in the title, um, first, and in order, so stuff bear, okay. But then with your URL, it's fine there, okay. That this, these two are fine. That's really aggressive, but it's fine. You still have like stuff bear, cuddle clones, you know, uh, shop now. You can do something like that, you know, or whatever, just to make your title a little bit more clickbaity, right? But then in your description in your H1, you're gonna want to get away from that, okay. Um, this is where you'd start. You'd still want to have stuffed and bear in there, but um, if you were if you're just going after that singular keyword, but you'd want to be more like um, we create, you know, amazing stuffed bear animals for your kids or something like that, right? Where stuffed bear is now still in order, but it's it's kind of buried back further into the sentence. You can even go less aggressive by doing, um, 
you know, either reversing bear stuffed animals, you know, where it's stuffed and bear is now a reverse position or <clears throat> even less aggressive is taking um, these words and separating them completely. Stuffed animal bears, right? Okay. And like I, I say this a lot, um, optimization is an art. It's an art form and it, it requires a lot of testing and stuff like that. I like to start fairly aggressive and then um, back it off from there. I'm not getting the results I want. So my H1 could be like, um, so there's my description. We create amazing stuffed animal bears for your kids. And then H1 is um, custom stuffed bears and more okay there's a really nice setup okay that's a great starting point so but this is for stuffed bear okay if you were targeting a single keyword so now take all the things that i've just kind of mentioned to you about like keep keep your keywords out of your url um if it's already in your domain the, the thoughts about aggressiveness, okay? But now I'm gonna show you, and that's for a singular keyword, okay? And I think that's important to understand for a singular keyword, um, how to optimize, okay? Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna optimize for a whole bunch of keywords, right? And this is, uh, sorry, I see one question. Let me answer this first. You're saying less aggressive to avoid a Google penalty. What about changing stuff to plush or cotton stuff? Um, yeah, less aggressive to avoid an, an over optimization penalty. Um, definitely. Um, but changing synonyms, I'm going to show you that now. Okay. Um, the example that I gave you here first um, was the reason I did it this way for a singular keyword is so that you could get an idea of how to optimize for a single keyword so that you could keep in mind, you know, those, those kind of rules. But now we're gonna take this to the next level where we're gonna still keep these rules in mind, but we're gonna create an optimization for a page for multiple keywords, okay? Because I don't wanna just rank for stuff bear. It might be the most important one to me that I really ultimately wanna rank for, but why would I wanna leave out all these other ones, right? Because there's so much traffic in there. Now, let's do this. Let's, let's look at how to, um, let's move this bear group. Okay, let's look at how to rank or optimize for a, a big group of keywords. Now, the initially what I used to teach you guys was to take your list of keywords, deduplicate it down to a single list, and then start making a sentence out of there. But what we actually did is we went ahead and built that functionality into the project planner. So this little group word cloud, if you click this, what this has just done is deduplicated your list for you. Okay, so for instance, stuffed bear, stuffed teddy bears, um, the word stuffed is repeated. Um, bears is there in, in plural, bear is there in singular, but there's bear again, there's bear. It's, so there's bear, there's bears, it deduplicated the list for you. But what it also did is it showed you what word is repeated through among, amongst the whole group of keywords by bolding it the most. So you can see bear, if you hover over bear, okay, it shows up five times amongst all your keywords. Now, if I click it, it'll show you where they are. Okay, so we know the word bear is very, very important. We also know, and then it gets smaller and smaller. There's stuffed, there's teddy, okay, bears becoming plural, animal, plush, custom, and polar, right? This keyword cloud is gonna help us optimize very, very quickly because now we have a visual representation of the most repeating and important keywords in our group of keywords. Now, knowing that our most important elements are our title and our description, and knowing what is you know the main keyword that we want to go after being stuffed bear, it just happens to also work out that stuffed and bear are the two most important keywords. So here's how we're going to start crafting for the entire group. Okay. So let's let's make a new title here. And we'll make this number three. Okay. Um, number one, do you do okay? Use use the PS um, cloud, okay? Because that's going to give you an idea of what keywords are repeating the most. Okay. Number two. Um, oh, 
I guess we should make these back to normal size texting. Oops. Okay, keep in mind what your main keyword or words, okay, are that you want to rank for. Okay, we want to rank for everything, but you have to keep in mind what the main keywords are that you want to rank for. Now, how are you going to decide what the main keywords are that you want to rank for? It might be just pure in this situation because everything looks like it's equally hard to rank for. We're just going to go after the most highest, highest traffic stuff, right? But let's say that this keyword here, custom teddy bear, you can see it's the only one that has a phrase match of under 100,000. Maybe this is the main keyword that we want to go after. So we have to just keep it in mind, right? Remember, this is an art, not a science. Keep it in mind while looking at everything. So um, keep in mind what... Hang on, sorry, that's my phone ringing. Where is that? There we go. Hang up. I'm gonna shut that ringer off too. Sorry, guys. Um. All right, so let me get back to on track here. Keep in mind what your main keywords are and what what it is you want to rank for. But we're gonna look at the cloud so that we can blend everything. Okay, so. In our instance, it's obviously gonna be stuffed bear. So also remember, here's the third rule. Also remember what your most important metrics are in your least, or your most important optimization opportunities. Remember that title and URL are more important when trying to rank than description and H1. Keep that in mind, and there's a reason why, okay? Title and URL are the two most important then description, then H1, and then finally, you know, content, right? The actual page content. So title, stuffed bear, okay? Or uh, I don't wanna be super aggressive here. We're gonna start with a medium level aggressive. So I definitely, I want these three words in there, okay? Uh, stuffed bear and teddy. So here we have stuffed bear, here we have stuffed teddy bears. So let's go with that one, stuffed teddy bears. Okay, and then what else do we have? Uh, we have plush custom animal. Okay, so let's do this. Um, stuffed teddy bears, plush is a two, custom is a one, so let's go plush. Plush animals made custom for you. We'll spell animals right, okay? So look at what we just did here with one title, stuffed, Teddy, instead of bear, we use bears, but whatever. Google understands the difference, okay? Plush animals made custom for you. We already like nailed almost every keyword in the list, right? But now we wanna go into our URL. Now this is a little bit different. URL being the next one, and I should actually move the URL above the H1. We'll get them to do that so that it's in order of um, difficulty. Now our Domain, we have to keep our domain in mind, custom, stuffed, and pets. So we can't use the word custom and we can't use the word stuffed. So take out custom and take out stuffed. So these two we don't want to use. Okay, so what are we really going after here, guys? We're going after plush teddy bears. So we can do it like this. And plush is kind of not that important. It's only a two. We're actually going after teddy and bear. Okay, we can go teddy bear. So now instead of up here, we use the plural, down here we'll use the singular, right? Now our description. So, okay, number one, we're through our most two most important SEO elements, title and a, uh, URL. Okay, we have stuffed teddy bears, plush animals made custom for you, and then our post URL is gonna be custom stuffed pets.com slash teddy bear. I can even do it this way. It doesn't matter, really, okay? So now we have description and H1 left. Our group description can be, um, we can um, make any type, or let's do it better. Let's get a little more aggressive. We make custom stuffed plush animals or teddy bears, let's go teddy bears, or polar bears. Okay, now we're gonna work in the word polar, because why not, it's there, might as well use it. 
Uh, we make custom stuff plush teddy bears or polar bear. Teddy, let's make, use good English, or polar bears, okay, for you. The only word I didn't get in there is animal. We make custom stuff plush teddy or polar bears for you, you animal. Or, like, you know, your animal will arrive in three weeks, four weeks. Okay, and then page um, the H1. You guys know what an H1 is, right? And where it exists on a page. Um, let, let's just do it. I'll just give you the example. Our H1. Now we're going to go after like the the lesser stuff um, because we're we're trying to be a medium aggressive. Okay, H1. We're going to just do stuffed plush. Okay, teddy bears. Stuffed plush teddy bears. Okay, so there we go. Now that it's done, we'll click save. Okay, um, and that's that's kind of the process, guys. Now, what we would do from here, okay? First of all, let me let me stop and ask you the question. Do you guys get this? Does this help? That's how you optimize. Okay, first of all, that's how you do keyword research to find a bunch of keywords. Okay. Um, for new content opportunities on your page. But once you have the group of keywords, this is how you optimize them um, and know that you're not over optimizing, you're keeping everything in mind, you're not breaking any rules, but you're really, really optimizing. And you'll end up, if you do a good job of you know building a few backlinks, um, you'll rank for all this shit, all these keywords on this single page, right? So now, okay, we've done the plan. That was the plan for this page. Now we have to build the page, right? So we're gonna go to the actions tab and we're going to create a new page from this group. Now it's creating the page, successfully created the page post. You can click below to edit it. Now we'll go to it and let's go look at what happened. Okay, there's our H1, there's our URL, there's our title, there's our description already filled in for us, right? The last step, guys, add your content. That's it, it's already optimized for you, right? And if you guys wanna do any like health analysis or whatever, you can do like put in whatever key, keyword you want, teddy bear, and you can see if it's there. But I don't use this anymore anyways because I'm targeting so many damn keywords, right, for this group. There's, there's our fully optimized page. Now, let's take this even further. Let's say we add our content, I go get a, and I will do this because this is actually a really good page, and I might as well go after it. Um, let's say that, you know, it's not ranking as good as I want, or it's ranking for one keyword other than the other one, and I don't like it, and <clears throat> I need to change some of the optimization elements, okay? So just make sure that's saved. There's two places I can do it, and the nice thing about, um, let's close the cloud here for a second. Close the keyword cloud, we'll close the keywords, okay? We're just looking at our, op or maybe we'll look at the keywords. Um, these, the title, description, H1, and the URL now are set and locked. This group is now locked to this page, okay? It's always gonna be locked. So if I go in here and I make any changes, actually, that's a stupid place to make it. That's an H1. Let's go look at this page, first of all, okay? There's our H1, and then obviously there was me saying add content. If I look at the optimization of it, there's my title, okay? And my description's down here somewhere too, blah, blah, it doesn't matter. But the point I'm trying to make now is, let's say I wanna make a change, okay? Um, to my title, my post title, okay? I could just update that, act fast. And then when I go back over here, if I was to refresh this page in my bears group, remember I made a change to my title in the bears group. Let me load that, okay. Uh, I always like doing this collapse all. I just wanna look at the bears page. We'll open that back up, okay, there. I made a change on the page, but it updates in the group because they're synced up, right? So if you make a change here, it will update on the page. And if you make a change on the page, it will update in your plan, 
It is two-way communication going on here. Um, and the reason I'm telling you guys this is if you do go ahead and make a change, and I can show you what's going on, you know, a better example is to do this. Um, show you what I'm actually doing and why I'm doing it. When I'm making changes, I want to record the changes I'm making because I want to know if they're working or not, right? So if I go into my project management for a, a different site, how to make money with Bitcoin, I'll show you a couple of those changes happening and how I'm recording it. Um, so see here under notes, guys. Okay, and I'll go back to the custom stuff one just because it's easier on the brain sometimes to see what we've been working on. Right now it's empty. So I can add any note I want. Page created on... Um, 2018, January 23rd, okay? And then click save. Now I have a note. It's just a note, doesn't matter, right? But I also have it over here in my SEO box on that same page, okay? I can go to notes. There's my note, right? Now, why do we need notes? On 2017, October 19th, I reworded the SEO um, of this entire page from this. I took a screenshot of what it was because that's the easiest way to do things. Okay. Here's what I had. And there's where I was ranking. Okay. For those certain things. And I changed it to this. I took another screenshot. Okay. And how, do, how did it affect my, my stuff? Well, I'm not ranking for shit anymore on this. So maybe it was a bad change or maybe I need to build more links or whatever. But the point is, guys, I'm taking notes if I need to make changes and seeing how those changes are affecting. And that way, I'm always on top of knowing, you know, how the changes that I'm doing for an on-page optimization are affecting what's happening. Uh, Les said, how would you do the same optimization on an existing page? That's a great question. Let's do that. Um, what you would actually do Okay, so let's do, uh, let's let's collapse all these for a second, okay? This is actually all the pages on this site that I'm that I'm doing shit for, okay? But let's say I'll, I created a new post, and I know I did. Um, I did one for the Big Bang Theory shit. Like, um, so let's just say you have a, an existing post on your blog, and you want to do it. So what you would do is go into your project, okay? Go to Actions, and you're going to go um, add a group from an existing page or post, okay? And then it's going to bring up the, you know, the thing, which page or post do you want? And you can search for it if you know the, the name of it. I know the one I dealt with was Big Bang Theory, so I'll just type in Big Bang. And there it is, okay? I'm not optimized for this post yet. So there I go. I'll select that post, and I'll add the group. So what this is going to do now is take an existing post and pull it in as a new group, okay? So there's the new group. Let's work on it. We're going to expand the uh, that. I don't have any keywords that I'm targeting for it yet, but at least I can work on the optimization of it, right? So I can do added. I don't even have a description. I can add a description. I can change the title. I can change the H1. I can add keywords that I want to target and redo things. But really, the starting point is to answer your question less. How do you do this for an existing page? You pull the existing page in. And you look at what you got, and then you start your 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 optimization process over again. Does that answer your question? Okay, cool. Um, that's pretty much it, guys. Like a, that, there was one example. Now that process obviously takes me a lot longer while I'm explaining it and teaching it than it does while I'm actually doing it. Literally, guys, I could have done this. Um, I could have done the keyword research um, for for these projects. Okay, project management. Um, yeah, and you can see I've done it um, before. You can see I have like keyword research, keyword research one thousand plus, keyword research uh, thousand. There's the Webby demo that we just did. Um, I could do the keyword research, reorganize the group into a group, move it over into the active group, create the SEO for it, and execute a skeleton page and go order content all within like 20 minutes. Fast, really fast, right? And then if I order the content within hopefully an hour, it's there. I come back, I post the content, and boom, my page is live, right? 
it's, it's a really good organized way guys to be doing keyword research and to be planning out your blog because every post and every page on any site that you own is an opportunity to rank in Google for multiple keywords provided you're doing the on-page optimization, right? There's one more point actually as I'm saying this that I wanna make. Let's say you were done, um, let's go back to that, that, that project, okay? Our custom stuff the new page that we just created for bears, okay? Now I'm gonna go order content um, for this bear. So let me show you this. Actually, let's take this way further. Let's go to v3.projectscurrency, or sorry, app. Let's log into our Project Supremacy app. Let's take this all the way. Okay, I'm gonna go over articles now. Okay, I'm gonna go, oh, I just got booted. If you guys ever see this little thing pop up that we know about this bug, it just means that you got booted, okay? Just refresh the page, it'll ask you to log in again. Oh, right now this one's being sticky. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go to iWriter. Okay, um, and then right here on this blue bar, new project, this might not work. I'm gonna order content right from Project Supremacy. Okay, so um, let's go back to our group. Oh, this is the wrong one. Get rid of him, get rid of him. Uh, we can even close that. Okay, Bears was the group that we were working on, okay? So I'm gonna order content for this. So let's just do, uh, and we know like we're going after stuff, teddy bears, okay? So I can order, I won't actually do this actually, but I'll just show it to you. I can order content from iWriter, right from Project Supremacy, and when the content was re ready, I could actually push it to this blog, um, to that page, right from the app, right from Project Supremacy app, the central dashboard, I can push it all there. Now the point that I was trying to make before I get sidetracked too much is, once the content is ordered, once it's placed, okay, and I wanna start building backlinks now, right? To this page, because I'm gonna see where it ranks just on its own. Hopefully you've done a good enough job of it um, that um, it'll start ranking on its own. And there's things you can do to help that along. You could put a, you could put schema for, um, you could put a schema on here for uh, Cuddle Cologne's brand, seeing as they're the ones that are actually making this stuff toy. And then um, collect reviews on this page or state the, the review so that you can get um, star ratings, just like I did with BitClub Network. There's things you could do anyways to help the on-page optimization. But when it's time to come to backlinking, say you're landing on page three or four, which is typically where I'm gonna land with any type of optimization, and now I need to move it up to page one, what anchor texts do you think you should be using? Stuff bear. Anchor text one, stuffed teddy bears, anchor text two, plush bears, anchor text three, right? Um, the URL, anchor text four. Typically guys, I could get to page one with less than five links, typically, okay? Now, does that mean that the optimization is so good um, that I could do it with five links or does that mean my PBNs are pretty good? Well, it's a little bit of both, okay? If you do a good job with optimization, it takes less links to get it to the first page but if you have more powerful PBNs, obviously that helps, okay? And I can do it with five, and I think you can too. Even rented links or, or, or social signals and shit like that. But these anchor text guys, when you're going after, um, you know, like you know how they talk about an anchor text profile for a page, you need, you know, 20% exact, and then 30% synonym, and then 10% like generic. These guys are, even though they're exact matches, you've optimized so damn good that if all you did was sent in these as your anchor text and you didn't use like click here's or URLs, you'd still be okay. You're still not over optimizing because stuffed bear isn't over optimized at all in this group and neither is stuffed teddy bears. It is not over optimized at all, right? <clears throat> if you really wanna be safe with your anchor text linking, you could do the first two as, as the keywords you're trying to rank for, the third one as the URL, the fourth one as the keyword, the fifth one as the domain, the sixth one is another keyword. The, the seventh one is click here. And then you're just really being, you know, very safe in your anchor text linking. But not only is this um, group, guys, a really good way to help you optimize your page, it's also a list of anchor texts that you should be using because you're so optimized. That's the anchor text you should be using for your backlinks. 
Just give me one if this is making a lot of sense to you guys. Awesome. How many people learned something about the project planner and about optimization today? Yeah, good. The project planner, guys, the, the project planner, this whole bit right here, okay, um, is underused. Number one, it's there's no other product like this on the market. Literally, project supremacy, you guys know that project supremacy right now is V3, okay? V1 of project supremacy was literally only the project planner, but it was nowhere near this good, obviously, right? But it was the idea because this process, guys, is what I used to do on spreadsheets to optimize my blog. I did this on spreadsheets. I even did the conditional formatting on spreadsheets, everything. V1 of Project Supremacy came out and it was the project planner and people were like, I don't get it, right? They just didn't get it. V2 came out, we added a bunch of stuff like schema and SEO and all that shit. And still people didn't really get the project planner. V3 added the centralized dashboard, more schema, a hugely improved project planner, right? And still people are like underutilizing it. This is a very underutilized thing. There's no other product on the market that has a project planner like this. But I'll tell you this, guys, if you get used to using this, you're going to start ranking for a shit ton of keywords and get a shit ton of traffic. Start mm -hmm. using it. It's an amazing tool, guys. It's an amazing, amazing tool. And it's it's at your disposal on every single blog that you guys have um, Project Supremacy installed on. Um, yeah, good, good. I'm seeing a lot of positive comments here. Thanks, Mike. Um, yeah, um, so I saw the, the question about where the replays are going to be, guys. Um, again, I kind of talked about that on, early on the webinar, but it's going to be v3.projectsupremacy.com um, slash webinars. And I'll mail the link. I'll mail it after the webinar, after it's up. But this is where all the replays are going to go, guys. Okay. I hate loading this page because that thing loads in my ear, but... Um, yeah, all the replays, these are two Facebook live feeds I did, and then these are going to be the actual replays, like what you're watching today is going to be um, on a third tab within, you know, two to three hours after the webinar is over. Um, David, can you show an example of a local keyword plan? I don't actually have one, to be honest, um, because for me, local is, I'm when I'm targeting local stuff, it's, it's usually pretty, um, pretty small. I'll, I'll check. I might have one for spray foam insulation Edmonton. So let's 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 take a look at this blog. Let's see where we're ranking. I used to have number one and number two for this. So things are no longer as good. Well, I haven't touched them in a long time. But let's log in and see what the keyword plan is for this. If I have one, I think I had one for this. It was kind of small. So supremacy V3 projects. Dull. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Yeah, there you go. I had one. Um, it was small. There's my home page. There's my addicts page. And there's my companies and contractors page. So um, very small. But I mean, hopefully you can... Um, David, hopefully you could just go back and watch the whole affiliate thing again and you'll understand um, how to do it in a local scenario. And you just have to understand that each box, right, is going to be a specific page or post on your site. Like, obviously, this is a three page site. It's very small. Or at least I only have three pages accounted for in this plan. Right. Um, I'll, Sylvia, I wouldn't recommend doing the import all pages on Serptech because Serptech has like typically 100 posts and 100 pages, and that's just too big of a plan to, to work on on this. You don't want 100 boxes, you know what I mean? Serptech's not really the best use for this, to be fully honest. This is for actually doing SEO and actually planning something out, whereas Serptech is like, I'm going to throw a bunch of shit against the wall and see how much of it sticks, right? This is for legitimately planning a real deal site. 
Um, yeah, James. I had done that earlier, but I don't know if um, it showed up for you. If you came on the webinar late, actually, that's a good question. Um, in the chat box, James Power, I had already posted that link. Can you see it in the chat box, not in like my private messages to you? But because you came on the webinar a little later, so I'm wondering if you could see the last links that I posted. I was late. You see it now. Okay, great. great. So you can still see all the stuff I put on there. Okay. Um, shit, that was like two hours already, guys. Um, let's just do Q&A for a bit here and then... Do you still do more SERP tech sites or small legit sites? Um, what I'm going to be doing here, James, right away is starting to hire out VAs to start building a lot of little um, little affiliate sites using everything in Project Supremacy just because it's so effective and it's so good. Um, like Tanil's that Bitcoin site, guys, that I built, um, once Project Supremacy was put onto it and I started doing all these things, like the social stuff that I showed you at the beginning of a webinar and then targeting... Um, you know, new keyword groups and, and new companies and signing up with new affiliate programs and shit. I ended up making like hundred over $170,000 um, this year on that site. Um, a lot of it partially due to the rise in price of Bitcoin. Like um, I was being paid in Bitcoin and then Bitcoin went crazy. Um, so, you know, like you could say the site only made a certain amount of Bitcoin, but that Bitcoin became very, very valuable. So the site ended up making me like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, and then like even sites like this were custom stuff pets. Like if you guys have ever gone and looked at this site, it's like really not that great of a site, but it consistently makes like $500 a month on the few pages that we do have on it. Now I just made a page for dogs, you know what I mean? Uh, or pigs or whatever it is, bears, teddy bears. I should be doing that or have a VA adding new content and new stuff like that, targeting, you know, that many keywords on a daily basis or, or at least bi-weekly, right? And it's so easy to make money um, doing this shit that I, I really need to get a VA um, to help me do it because honestly, guys, I'm, I'm mostly focused on um, building the software, right? Um, building Project Supremacy and making sure it's, it's it's doing good and then running the company and the Facebook pages and shit like that. So I don't have a lot of time to be building surf tech sites and little affiliate sites. Um, I spend what time I can on it because I enjoy it. Like ultimately, guys, I came from an SEO background of like, I built little sites that, that eventually got successful and then I started an agency and now I'm a software developer because I'm a very organized, methodical person and apparently um, that translates well into developing software and ideas, right? Like the project planner, for instance. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna start hiring VAs to be adding more content to sites that I do have and then also building out more little um, little sites and, and doing this whole process because it just plain out works, absolutely works. Uh, David, uh, you forgot to ask earlier, after a backup is complete and transferred to Amazon, uh, is the backup file removed from the website host? Um, it's never put on the website host, David. Um, when you create a backup with V3, um, it's only ever put where you specify it to be put, right? So, um, so for instance, um, if you had specified it to be saved um, as an FTP, um, which I don't, I use, I use Google cloud, but, um, uh, SFTP, meaning your own FTP to your own site that you own, then the backup will be stored there. But if you have a limit of five, only five will back up and the oldest ones will drop off over time. So, um, it never saves on your website or host, um, like HostGator does or anything like that. James, do you, uh, you came on late, but there's nothing to see in the box here, Bruce. Um, the link was just the replay link. I'll just post that to you in private. There you go. Um, in about three hours, today's webinar is going to be replayed on that link, and all the other webinars will be replayed. You want to how to make a PBN course, Alex? <laughs> we actually did a webinar for uh, Matt Woodward's PBN course a little while ago. You must have missed that, but um, it's a lot of work to create a course on how to create a PBN, to be honest, and I don't have the time to do it um, because PBNs are not – there's, there, it's a lot of info, you know, I, it's not something I could teach in a day or an hour or something like that. It's, it requires a course. Actually, you know what, Alex, come on the webinar tomorrow that we're having. Um, I think all you guys should come on this webinar, to be honest. Um, where, let me get you the link. So we have the lab. So we're having the guys from the lab come on. Is anybody in the lab? Give me a one if, if you're in the lab.
Not many. Okay. Um, what the lab is, guys, it's a group of guys that are super badasses at SEO, like Matt Diggity. I'm sure you guys have heard of him. Um, Mark Luck and Bob, Brian Willie from Local Client Takeover there in the lab. Uh, Dino Gomez is in the lab. And then there's a couple other guys I'm not as familiar with that do e comm and shit like that. And they're just a bunch of scientific um, type of guys who do a lot of testing and a lot of geeky shit. And then the lab is the place where they're sharing a lot of their results and lessons. Um, but the funny thing with the lab is, um, like we know Mark and Dino and Dino used to rent links for me. Mark um, um, and I met in Vegas and hit it off really well. Um, Matt Diggity, I've been working on for a while um, to try and show him stuff. And we're finally just getting this relationship coming. A lot of the stuff they teach guys can be implemented with Project Supremacy and they're finally realizing that. Um, and we, I mean, I teach SEO guys, but these guys are like the beasts of, te they, I mean, the shit that I teach you, I learned from a lot of guys like these. So we're having this webinar tomorrow for the lab that I think you guys should come on. Uh, do you know Matt and Mark are each going to teach a different strategy of SEO? Matt's going to teach like um, super affiliate marketing shit. Uh, Mark's going to teach uh, PBN stuff. And the reason I'm to get back to the PBN question, um, Mark's going to teach like advanced PBN shit and Dino's going to teach some Facebook hacks. Um, but the lab will have a lot of shit about PBNs. Alex, to answer your question, um, if you want to learn how to build a PBN, uh, the lab would be a course that you would definitely want to join. I think these guys are going to be the new, uh, like I came in um, through Alex Becker and then I eventually went into OMG and now I'm just kind of on my own. But I think the lab has and local client takeover has what it takes to be like the new OMG. They're going to be the biggest guys and they already are actually, I think LCT is the biggest group on the internet for, uh, for local. But um, Matt is just an absolute baller when it comes to PBNs and affiliate marketing and Dino's good at Facebook shit. So definitely come and check that out. Melissa, how do I find products and services to build an affiliate site for? I mean, there's so many ways to do that. You can scour ClickBank or you can join up to, you know, just type in the word affiliate network and just go start scouring through the affiliate networks. Um, you could do like CPA Offer Vault um, is another website where you can come and just search for shit um, and see who's offering affiliate programs. There's so many ways to find products. Just use Google, Melissa, to find products. Um, just start searching and you know the, the best thing to, to actually to, to give you a different kind of answer there Melissa the things that you use personally in your everyday life um, start keeping track of what you're doing and what you're using in your everyday life that you really like and see if they have an affiliate program like maybe the services that you use or um, products that you use see if there's affiliate programs for those because if there are and you like the terms um, you're you're a, you'll become a better writer and you'll become more emotionally involved in that like bitcoin for me i love writing about bitcoin because i'm so involved in bitcoin so i never order content i write the content because i just love it right um and that's really helpful when you're building an affiliate site to have a kind of an emotional attachment to it so definitely think about that david o'neill says type in niche plus affiliate program in google so like something like um so if we go to google.com if you're a golfer, maybe, you know, or a sports enthusiast, you could do something like that. Okay, golf affiliate program. And then just start searching through shit. <laughs> Check this one. That's a huge one. Um, oh, the Chrome extension, start.me, guys. If you really like, everyone loves that for some reason. I get asked this question all the time. How do I store all my my links? This is just a, a, a bookmark extension called start.me. Everyone loves it. You should buy that company. All right, guys, any last questions? We're at over the two hour mark here, so I just wanna make sure we get a good recording. Um, I'll take any last questions. Otherwise, hopefully you guys got a lot out of this training webinar. Um, hopefully you learned a lot about the project planner. Um, it's so huge. Um, where do I get my logo designs? I use freelancer.com and I post contests. I don't have a designer actually. I, I use a, a contest on freelancer. So the re the thing with freelancer contests is you get like tons of submissions. And then as you start marking your favorites, other people start understanding what your design type is like and they start designing based on what you like and shit just gets better and better and better. Yeah, OMG kind of went a little south there, Mike. A lot of 
drama, a lot of drama. Um, Sylvie, we're, I, I don't really cover um, backlinks as a topic simply because that doesn't, these webinars are meant to teach you about the software, right? Um, backlinks don't really have much to do teaching you how to find a backlink doesn't really have anything to do with v3 that might be that's not really the intention of this webinar um so i probably excuse me i probably won't cover backlinks and how to find them but tomorrow's webinar um being that it's not a training webinar on v3 the lab they will be talking about backlinks tomorrow a lot sylvie so you'll definitely want to be on tomorrow's webinar All right, guys, that is going to be it then. Um, thanks for coming on. Hopefully you learned a lot of shit, and we will see you next week. Once again, I will post that replay. Um, I'll replay that webinar. Hopefully by tonight I have to edit it and render it and stuff. So hopefully it will be on by tonight. And there's Todd. Uh, missed the webinar. Fell asleep. <laughs> All right. Talk to you guys later.